Sisters, Season 8, Episode 1. Let's get into this recap. All right, y'all, we pick up right where we left off in season seven. Andy is finding Gary's body. She does this fake Hollywood scream. And then we head straight into her interrogation with Detective Watts. Now, he wants to know how Andy went from wanting to testify against Gary to wanting to marry him. Now, of course, Andy is not trying to tell him the truth. It seemed like she was still trying to protect Gary. And she is telling him that her involvement with Gary is very complicated. So he like, okay, so how is this so complicated that he ended up with a knife in his chest? And she told him, baby, my personal and romantic choices are no material for your case. Mm -hmm. Now, Andy thought she ate, but sis didn't even bite. Because then the detective informs her that Gary has passed away in the ICU from a blood clot. And Andy breaks down in tears. And the detective looks at her and he's like, really? Tears? Now, Andy gets to go. She gets Gets up she ready to leave and the detective said Andy sit down and Andy gonna say my name is Mrs. Barnes to you girl <laughs> Now we head over to Hudson's interrogation and he is upset. He cannot believe that this happened to his best friend, his brother Gary. And the police is like, well, maybe it was an investor in y'all Ponzi scheme because y'all hedge fund, yeah, that's a scam. And Hudson said, no, 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 no. It was Andy because you see, Gary loved Andy with his whole heart to the point where it got him killed and Gary wasn't the one that was corrupt. It was Andy and everything that he did was to get Andy more money because she was so greedy and nothing was ever good enough for her and she's this gold digger boy save that for somebody who gonna actually believe it and the detective was like well why didn't she just marry him and inherit all his money if that was the case child that part it is Karen's turn in the interrogation room and let's just say the detective started this interrogation off all wrong he asked her how your baby daddy doing? Oh, I mean your baby daddy's. And Cameron is like, sir, ask me what you need to ask me so I can get going. And he was like, oh, do you got somewhere else you need to be? And Cameron was like, yes, I do. Work. I own a salon. And he was like, oh, because your first one got burnt down and then Zach moved on with Fatima. And Cameron like, wait a minute. What this got to do with Gary getting stabbed? And he was like, oh, well, I'm getting there. And she said, oh, baby, get there faster. And then he started bringing up Roots to Riches and how Miss Marie invested in Rooster Riches and how she invested in Gary's little hedge fund and how much money Miss Marie lost. So now she's thinking that Pam, Karen, and Miss Marie is plotting to get Gary up out of here. And Karen, like, so you think we have something to do with it? Sus, if he didn't, you wouldn't be there. <laughs> Over at the juice bar, Tony and Rich are meeting up and they are talking about Danny and Sabrina being stuck at the police station waiting to be interrogated. Now, Tony is also concerned about Andy because she is also there and that's Jordan's girl. But Rich, he don't give a damn. He said this is all Andy's fault because she was trying to play Jordan and Gary at the same time. Well, damn Rich, tell us how you really feel. Sabrina is being interrogated, and of course, our good sis is nervous. Now, we all know that the detective was going to bring up this bank robbery, and Sabrina is like, uh-uh. See, if you did your homework, you would know that I was clear to all those charges. And the detective was like, yeah, I see that. I also see that you did jail time, got out, got your job back, and got a promotion. And then, and then he started alluding to the fact that her and the girls was in cahoots to do this to Gary. And Sabrina was like, no, we was not. That's what you not going to do. My friends ain't like that. And he was like, oh, you very defensive when it comes to your friends from college. And she said, um, they're my family. We would do anything for each other. And he said, oh, even kill. And she said, I did not kill Gary. And he said, well, you know, if you did, you can get off with temporary insanity. And she said, uh-uh, listen. If you don't have anything else to say to me, I would like to leave. Child, jail taught us something. <laughs> 
Some people never change. And by some people, I mean Danny. Danny is in this interrogation room, vape pen in hand. Now, of course, the detective is like, oh, you can't do that. And she's like, what you going to do, arrest me? And he looks at her and he's like, look, I already know you're going to do this same song and dance as your friends. And then he said, uh, I don't know who told you that. But when I went to the wedding, I was there to F stuff up. And he was like, oh, okay. So you went there looking for trouble. All right, we get somewhere. And then he said, yeah, I wake up and choose violence every day if I have to. And he was like, well, how far were you willing to go? And she was like, I told Andy I was going to burn it down. Now, the detective noticed, like, Danny is a straight shooter. She ain't got nothing to do with this. And he was like, um, you didn't stab Gary, did you? And she was like, nah, but whoever did, get him a key to the city. Ciao. Right now. <laughs> Now, if I don't know nothing, I know my man. It is Zach's turn to be interrogated. And the first words out of my baby daddy mouth was, I need to call my attorney. I'm not speaking to you without my attorney. And the detective was like, well, why would you need your attorney if you ain't do nothing wrong? Did you do something wrong? And Zach was like, look, that reverse psychology, it ain't going to work on me. And he was like, oh, yeah, because you've been in and out of jail. How's your brother? How's your family? And Zach like, look, you can either let me call my attorney or we can sit here all day and mean mug each other. It don't matter to me. And the detective was like, oh, we just having a friendly conversation it probably wasn't you. It was probably your hot-tempered fiancé. And Zach say, keep her name out your effing mouth and off that suspect list. And the detective was like, oh, well, what would Heather's lawyer think when she found out that you and Fatima being investigated for this? And Zach said, investigated? So what you saying? Gary dead? And the detective said, how many dudes you know Make it with a knife through the heart. Oh, Lord. <laughs> It's Fatima's turn in the hot seat, and I don't know who hired these detectives, but they need to be fired, because what are we doing? Now, this detective that is interrogating Fatima starts bringing up Zach's family and his baby mama drama, and Fatima like, wow, it sounds like you watch too much TV. And then he starts talking about this fake podcast where the paralegal kills her boss's fiance, and Fatima like, that sounds so far-fetched. And the detective was like, oh, well, maybe it was personal, and Fatima Team was like, oh, well, what was the motive? And he said, I don't know. Maybe the dead groom stole from the fiance. And Fatima looked at that man and said, you got to stop watching so many podcasts, sir. We back in a room with Andy and she is ready to go. She want to know when these questions going to be over. And Detective Watts is like, is there something else you'd rather be doing? Now, Andy is in the law family and she know a little some some. And she's like, okay, so you went to talk to everybody else. They ain't say nothing to you. So now you back in here talking to me. You really ain't got no suspects. I told you my friend's incapable of murder. And Detective Watts was like, oh, but there's one more thing or a special guest. And who's the special guest? Jordan. Now, he is in the other room being interrogated, and he just wants to know about Penelope. Is she okay? Can she come home? Gary is gone. Can she come? And the detective was like, well, that's what we're here to talk to you about. We're here to talk to you about why your sister was in protective custody to begin with. And Jordan is like, yes, Gary, he is a cancer. He was infectious to everybody that he touched. So the detective is like, well, Jordan, he did a lot more than just touch your sister. He got her pregnant, left her while she was pregnant, made her lose her baby, was creeping with Andy behind her back. I'm sure that pissed you off. And Jordan said, yeah, it pissed him off. So the detective was like, okay, so that's why you went up there to the wedding. And Jordan said he just wanted answers. And the detective was like Jordan you lost everything you was running for office your sister disappeared your love life was on the rocks and Jordan was like yes I wanted Gary to pay for what he did but I didn't do it and then he was saying that Andy was Penelope's lawyer and the detective was like yeah she was playing you and your family and Jordan was like look I know that you don't like Andy and he told Jordan I don't like lying bitches Oh, and Jordan said, don't you talk about her like that. Jordan, child, say that energy for Gary when he heal up. <laughs> 
Now, Andy is still in this room. She is still ready to go. Detective Watts is like, you can leave whenever you want to leave. And she's like, oh, is that true? Are you yelling at other people when they get up to leave? You telling them to sit down? I am the officer of the court. I came in here voluntarily to try to help y'all. And y'all got my friends up in here all day. And he like, baby girl, relax. We let your friends go hours ago. They probably at home chilling right now. And Andy like, oh, girl, your ass should have been left. <laughs> Sister Hayden is at home news blasting. They are reporting on Gary stabbing, not his murder, his stabbing. And Hayden talking about Gary got what he deserved. Now she gonna get what she deserved. He looking for his passport, which means that he is planning on leaving the country. He got all his stuff. He headed towards the door, but not so fast. Knock, knock, who's there? It's Tamara. Baby is given that Hayden is guilty AF. Sabrina is home and her man Rich was waiting on her at the door. Now Sabrina has work later on, but she needs a breather. She said that she is overwhelmed. Them detectives had her in there interrogating her like she did something wrong. And she said the only thing that she did was try to help Andy. Girl, well at least you got a man to come home to. Danny is also home and she needs to write in her diary. Now, this is something new that her therapist, Kresha, has her doing. And, of course, Danny is going to crack her jokes. So, she's like, oh, the police thought I off Gary. I got this killer instincts. But then she started taking it serious. She starts talking about Andy and Gary's relationship and how Andy ignored all these red flags. And how being so close to their drama is making her think about her own drama. Now, before we got too deep. And walks Tony and Danny is immediately turned on and she is trying to do the do. And Tony is like, chill out. Like, I just want to make sure you okay. One of your best friends just walked in on her fiance bleeding out. Like, talk to me about how you feel. Tony, baby, you the only one trying to have a conversation. <laughs> My baby daddy and sister wife back home and Zach is upset that the police had them down there all day thinking that they did something to Gary. And for Tima like, well, did you? And he like, did I what? And she like, did you do it? And he was like, you think I did something? And she was like, well, you was mad at him for having that dude rough me up and taking my peace. And once we got to the place, we did split up. And Zach like, you really think that I got it in me to kill a man in cold blood? And she like, listen, I'm not tripping if you did. We just need to be on the same page. And he like, I put that on my unborn kids and Michael. I had nothing to do with this. And she was like, okay, well, I believe you. And he like, uh-uh, so did you? Because you got just as many reasons as me. And she was like, baby, I'm not doing hard time for nobody. He like, so that's a no? She said, oh, that's a hell no. And by the way... I don't use knives for that. I use knives as torture. And Zach is like, so if you didn't do it and I ain't do it, then who did it? Baby, they finna go on their own investigation spree. They finna try to figure it out themselves. Hudson is running through the hospital hallways trying to get to Gary's room. He runs into the doctor and he wants to know why they ain't call him and tell him that his brother, his best friend, has passed away. And the doctor is like, look, the police told y'all that to try to get y'all to say something. I'm guessing. Now, he did flatline, but he is a tough cookie and he is still among us living folk. But we already knew that. This man finna get out this hospital and raise hell. Now, I don't know what bone Detective Watts got to pick with Andy, but baby, he picked it. He sat in that interrogation room and he said to her, women like you make me sick. Whenever a woman of your kind starts screaming abuse, half a dozen come forward screaming me too. And when a good man try to help, you go crawling back to the same son of a B-I-T-C-H that abused you. You pathetic. And Andy said, oh my Lord. You are not playing fair. And Detective Watts said Jordan has no chances of running for office all because he was dealing with a tramp like you. Now, Andy, you know she got to say something. She like, hold on, wait a minute. Now, you done sit up in here being all misogynistic all day. You don't get a cookie for being a good man. But it's good men like you that turn a blind eye to men like Gary. Then she started calling the man an asshole. He started calling her a drama queen. Child, they was finna get into the going on with the going on. But wait, Robin is back. Robin walked in and he was like, Andy, don't say nothing else. And I was like, oh my God, Robin, where have you been? You look better than before. Now, Robin, we happy you back. Hey, we missed you. But where were you? 
the night of the wedding but anyway, y'all, that was that on that. I will be back next week with a recap to episode two. In the meantime, between time, watch the videos from my other shows. Like, comment, subscribe. Let's have a conversation down in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me on all my social medias. I will link them down in the description box. And yeah, it's your girl, Cindy Renee. And I will see y'all next week with another sister's video. Peace.